Hello there and welcome to the second part of the how to stream Rocksmith tutorial. I've got a lot of people coming into the channel and asking me, yo Dutch, how do you do this? How do you play Rocksmith without using the real tone cable? Well, in this episode I will tell you all about it. So we're, what we are going to cover today is playing Rocksmith without using the real tone cable. We're going to use VST plugins to create our own custom tones and we're going to learn how to MIDI trigger those sounds in case you want to go from distortion to clean or from clean to distortion or whatever you want. The options are endless here. So I'm pretty excited. I hope you are as well. Let's dive right into this. All right, here we go. This is where we left off last time. As you can see, I did a little upgrade on the overlays. For now, for the second part, we are going to dive into Reaper. The thing with Reaper is you go to reaper.fm. Reaper is a digital audio workstation or a DAW. It's free for a limited time. It's not that expensive and it's very, very useful. Aside from that, it contains something we need to make this work, which is the Rear Root plugin. The Rear Root plugin is an ASIO that will allow us to connect to OBS, all right? So the important part on downloading Reaper is if we go to the download page, which we did, we have the 32-bit and we have the 64-bit. We need to install both of them. We probably are going to use the 64-bit, but the communication goes through the 32 bit. That's why we need both versions. Make sure to install both. So we click on the download button, a little download box pops up and we are going to install it. All right. So there's this little drop down box here, this little plus. If you press this plus, you see this rear root ASIO driver. That's exactly the one we need. So make sure it's marked. In order to connect our guitar, we are going to need an audio interface. I'm using the Focusrite Scarlett 2i4. Uh, if you have one, that is very awesome. If not, search one on the web. There are tons of audio interfaces to get for, for a pretty cheap price. And it's very useful if you want to make this work. Also, if you're using a mic just like I do, like this one, you have to have an interface with two inputs. So make sure you have that or else you will only be able to plug in your guitar. The next thing we need is the Rocksmith ASIO. Go to this GitHub page. I will post a link in the description below and just follow the how to use text. So you open up GitHub, scroll down a bit, Rocksmith ASIO, how to use, press the latest release file. If you press the latest release file, you see a release 0.5.4 zip file. Click that zip file, download it right here and make sure to extract those files to your Rocksmith directory. We open the ini file and this is where everything is happening. You have to make sure to enable ASIO here by putting a one. One means yes. All right, let's go out from that. Also, set your buffer size mode. I decided to put it on custom because I specifically wanted to request a buffer size of 128. That's because it corresponds with my focus right settings. I have set the sample rate to 48K and that is very important because Rocksmith only accepts 48K and I've set my buffer size at 128. So you see, these numbers correspond with each other. Up here we can check which ASIO we will use to connect to Rocksmith. So we are going to use the rear root ASIO because eventually we're going to add rear root ASIO to OBS as well. Make sure for your output that it's set correctly as well as your input. As you notice, there are two inputs here. So if you plug, have plugged your guitar cable into this first input from your interface, make sure it's ASIO input zero. If you plug it into the second of your interface, make sure it's set to ASIO input one. I have plugged it into my first one, so I will use ASIO input zero. Make sure to put rear root ASIO there. Okay, from the Rocksmith ASIO ini file, we're going to dive into the original Rocksmith ini file, which is right above the Rocksmith 2014 executable, all right? So double click it and it opens up this notepad thing. Make sure to copy these settings. You need a little bit of tweaking and it's very personal. 
if you experience crackling in game, you have to adjust the buffer size. And that means the buffer size in all three stuff we uh, now currently did, all right? So make sure to set enable microphone to zero, exclusive mode to one, latency buffer to four, because that is the biggest for Rocksmith, and make sure this max output buffer size corresponds again with the original output buffer size number we did just ago, all right? That is important because it needs to correspond every single time. So once again, if you experience crackling in game, you have to adjust the buffer size and make sure to adjust them in all of those, all of those parts, all right? Also set real tone cable only to yes, because we want to make Rocksmith think we are using the real, real tone cable. Now we are going to set up Reaper. I already entered the mic here because else I could not record this. So don't mind it, just leave it be and just create a new track. So right click the mouse button right here and press insert new track. Make sure to arm it, all right? Give it a name, say input one or just guitar. Let's call it guitar. Yeah, so it makes it more clear what it is. This is the guitar input. It's set to input one, which is good. Input mono, input one. Keep it like that, all good, all good. Insert another new track, make sure to arm it. And that this one we call From Rocksmith. All right, because this track is going to receive the sound from Rocksmith. So guitar input is going to send the signal from your guitar into Rocksmith. And the second one is going to receive the sound from Rocksmith. So that is very important. Make sure to set this input to stereo Rear route one and rear route two. Then we're going to signal, uh, oh, reroute it through these routing panels. So, guitar input, open it up. Make sure to turn off the master send because we don't want your original guitar tone to come through in the final mix, all right? So, we have turn off master send and select a rear route one and two in the audio hardware outputs right there, all right? Also, for the From Rocksmith one, add audio hardware outputs and set it to Rear Root 3 and Rear Root 4. Because eventually, this is what is going to OBS. This is the basic setup where we can avoid the real tone cable. Now let's make sure it correctly sends and receives the sound from Rocksmith. Let me grab a guitar real quick. There we go, the beautiful majesty. So now that we have set everything up in Reaper, let's try the sound out right here. I grab the guitar. Let's see if the guitar input is actually giving us a sign that it's receiving this signal, and it does. So let's open up Rocksmith, and as you can see, if I'm going to scroll these things, you see there is some activity going in the From Rocksmith track. So let's just play a little part and see if it works, including some tongue changes. Let's go! So now that we've got Rocksmith running with ASIO, it's time to add some own custom tones using VST plugins. So as you can see, I added a couple of tracks here. The, the main VST plugin and some, uh, yeah, two separate effects which we will cover later on. We're almost done with this tutorial. It's a lot, I know, but it is definitely worth it. So make sure to right click it again, insert new track, and name it however you want. I'm calling it Pliny because that's the VST I'm using. Arm it, add effect. Make sure to add a VST2 and not a VST3 because a VST3 is not able to receive MIDI messages, so that's why you need a VST2, all right? Make sure to use VST2. Now that we've installed our VST plugin, I'm going to uh, get a tone. A nice custom lead tone. I will open up my Rocksmith. 
and let you experience a different... Oh, before we do that, we want to exclude our in-game sound first. So go to options, go to your mixer, and make sure player guitar volume is set to zero, all right? Then hit escape, and I will show you the magic. Here we go. Some little Jan Serka in the end. Good song. You know what it is? Rocksmith tones will never be able to get this high quality sound. So I will just just listen. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Come on, guys! So now we've got it working with VST plugin. It's time to connect a MIDI device to it. So, I already created one, but press new track, then go uh, the Armade, of course, and then in the input section, input MIDI to UM1. For me, that is the MIDI device I'm using. That's it. You enter that, and then there's this little software called MIDI OX. Get that software, because this software shows you what message you send if you press a specific button on your MIDI board. And it will allow you to connect the right MIDI button to the right sound, if that makes sense. I will show you a bit, so I will press some stuff here, and it, it, it shows you what it is. So I press the first button, which is C0, then the second one, which is C1, and C2. So those are my codes to work with in my archetype. So I'm opening up the standalone version of the VST plugin, open up the MIDI mappings board, yeah, board, control box, whatever you want to call it. And I've already set it up, but you can change everything right here. So we want the program change set, and I want it to change to custom lead whenever I press the third button on my MIDI board, all right? So that is the way to set it up, PC2. And when I press the second button on my MIDI board, I want it to be a clean sound. So I say program change preset, clean one, and set it to PC1, all right? I'm going to open up this one, which is the effects board. So we have the custom lead if I press three. <laughs> Easy. And if I want a clean sound, well, then I get a clean sound. It's magic, isn't it? It's magic. Wow. So that is how you set it up with MIDI. We have one more step left to do here, which is triggering specific stomp box effects with a different pedal. So let's do that. Okay, so the last part is switching these flanger and chorus effects by pressing a button on my USB device. So this is maybe the most hard part because you want it to trigger a specific sound or keystroke in Reaper, but you don't want Reaper to be the active window because you are playing Rocksmith. You want to have Rocksmith as your active window. So we have a little thing called Auto Hotkey for them. And I created a little script here, and let me show you. So you have to copy and paste these settings. If I press the first pedal, it will send numpad 7 keystroke. What this auto hotkey does is that detect hidden windows, because it is hidden. It's not the active window when I'm playing Rocksmith. And if I press that foot switch with my foot, it will send a keystroke to the PC, and the keystroke will be numpad 7. It will send this code. So in Reaper, go to your action list. Then go to toggle effects. Just look it up, toggle effects. If I press shift and N in Reaper, it will toggle bypass for track four, which is my flanger, all right? And that's the beautiful part. So I will, I actually press numpad seven using my pedals, but auto hotkey makes me able to send the shift plus N code to Reaper. Let me turn it on um, the auto hotkey program. 
this is it. So it's running, you just have to double click it. If I press that one, the effects on. You see, it will toggle the effects on. If I press it again, it will toggle it off. So it actually is a keyboard keystroke triggered effect box. And that's awesome. Okay, and that's it everyone. That wraps up this part two of the how to stream Rocksmith tutorial. It's a pretty complicated ride, but it is, it is absolutely worth it in the end. So make sure to follow it very, very closely. If you have questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Make sure to hit this hit subscriber button, hit the like button, share it with your friends, and I hope to see you next time, all right? Take care, and we'll see each other soon. Cheers.